Search 21 From Numbers Chapter 32 The tribes of Reuben and Gad owned vast numbers of livestock. So when they saw that the lands of Jazer and Gilead were ideally suited for their flocks and herds, they came to Moses, Eleazar the priest, and the other leaders of the community. They said, Notice the towns of Adaroth, Debon, Jazer, Nimrah, Heshbon, Elila, Sibma, Nebo, and Beon. The Lord has conquered this whole area for the community of Israel, and it is ideally suited for all our livestock. If we have found favor with you, please let us have this land as our property, instead of giving us land across the Jordan River. Do you intend to stay here while your brothers go across and do all the fighting? Moses asked the men of Gad and Reuben. Why do you want to discourage the rest of the people of Israel from going across to the land the Lord has given them? Your ancestors did the same thing when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. After they went up to the valley of Eshkol and explored the land, they discouraged the people of Israel from entering the land the Lord was giving them. Then the Lord was very angry with them, and he vowed, Of all those I rescued from Egypt, no one who is twenty years old or older will ever see the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for they have not obeyed me wholeheartedly. The only exceptions are Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, son of Nun, for they have wholeheartedly followed the Lord. The Lord was angry with Israel and made them wander in the wilderness for forty years until the entire generation that sinned in the Lord's sight had died. But here you are, a brood of sinners doing exactly the same thing. You are making the Lord even angrier with Israel. If you turn away from him like this and he abandons them again in the wilderness, you will be responsible for destroying this entire nation. But they approached Moses and said, we simply want to build pens for our livestock and fortified towns for our wives and children. Then we will arm ourselves and lead our fellow Israelites into battle until we have brought them safely to their land. Meanwhile, our families will stay in the fortified towns we build here, so they will be safe from any attacks by the local people. We will not return to our homes until all the people of Israel have received their portions of land. But we do not claim any of the land on the other side of the Jordan. We would rather live here on the east side and accept this as our grant of land. Then Moses said, if you keep your word and arm yourselves for the Lord's battles, and if your troops cross the Jordan and keep fighting until the Lord has driven out his enemies, then you may return when the Lord has conquered the land. You will have fulfilled your duty to the Lord and to the rest of the people of Israel, and the land on the east side of the Jordan will be your property from the Lord. But if you fail to keep your word, then you will have sinned against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Go ahead and build towns for your families and pens for your flocks, but do everything you have promised. Then the men of Gad and Reuben replied, We, your servants, will follow your instructions exactly. Our children, wives, flocks, and cattle will stay here in the towns of Gilead, but all who are able to bear arms will cross over to fight for the Lord, just as you have said. So Moses gave orders to Eleazar the priest, Joshua, son of Nun, and the leaders of the clans of Israel. He said, The men of Gad and Reuben who are armed for battle must cross the Jordan with you to fight for the Lord. If they do, give them the land of Gilead as their property when the land is conquered. But if they refuse to arm themselves and cross over with you, then they must accept land with the rest of you in the land of Canaan. The tribes of Gad and Reuben said again, We are your servants and we will do as the Lord has commanded. We will cross the Jordan into Canaan fully armed to fight for the Lord but our property will be here on this side of the Jordan. So Moses assigned land to the tribes of Gad, Reuben, and half the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph. He gave them the territory of King Sihon of the Amorites and the land of King Og of Bashan, the whole land with its cities and surrounding lands. The descendants of Gad built the towns of Debon, Adaroth, Aror, Atroth Shofan, Jazer, Jogbia, Beth Nimrah, and Beth Haran. These were all fortified towns with pens for their flocks. The descendants of Reuben built the towns of Heshbon, Eliel, Kiriathaim, Nebo, Baalmeon, and Sibma. They changed the names of some of the towns they conquered and rebuilt. Then the descendants of Maker of the tribe of Manasseh went to Gilead and conquered it, and they drove off the Amorites living there. So Moses gave Gilead to the Makerites, descendants of Manasseh, and they settled there.
The people of Jair, another clan of the tribe of Manasseh, captured many of the towns in Gilead and changed the name of that region to the towns of Jair. Meanwhile, a man named Noba captured the town of Keneth and its surrounding villages, and he renamed that area Noba after himself. This is the route the Israelites followed as they marched out of Egypt under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's direction, Moses kept a written record of their progress. These are the stages of their march, identified by the different places where they stopped along the way. They set out from the city of Ramesses in early spring, on the fifteenth day of the first month, on the morning after the first Passover celebration. The people of Israel left defiantly in full view of all the Egyptians. Meanwhile, the Egyptians were burying all their firstborn sons whom the Lord had killed the night before. The Lord had defeated the gods of Egypt that night with great acts of judgment. After leaving Ramesses, the Israelites set up camp at Succoth. Then they left Succoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. They left Etham and turned back toward Pi-Hahiroth opposite baal Zephon and camped near Migdal. They left Pi-Hahiroth and crossed the Red Sea into the wilderness beyond. Then they traveled for three days into the Etham wilderness and camped at Mara. They left Mara and camped at Elam, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees. They left Elam and camped beside the Red Sea. They left the Red Sea and camped in the wilderness of Sin. They left the wilderness of Sin and camped at Dovka. They left Dovka and camped at Alush. They left Alush and camped at Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. They left Rephidim and camped in the wilderness of Sinai. They left the wilderness of Sinai and camped at Kibroth Hata'ava. They left Kibroth Hata'ava and camped at Hazeroth. They left Hazeroth and camped at Rithma. They left Rithma and camped at Rimen Piras. They left Rimen Piras and camped at Libna. They left Libna and camped at Rissa. They left Rissa and camped at Kihalatha. They left Kihalatha and camped at Mount Shefer. They left Mount Shefer and camped at Harada. They left Harada and camped at Mechaloth. They left Mechaloth and camped at Teath. They left Teath and camped at Terah. They left Terah and camped at Mithka. They left Mithka and camped at Hashmona. They left Hashmona and camped at Mosroth. They left Mosroth and camped at Benet Jaikin. They left Benet Jaikin and camped at Horhegagad. They left Horhegagad and camped at Jot Batha. They left Jot Batha and camped at Abrona. They left Abrona and camped at Ezion Geber. They left Ezion Geber and camped at Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. They left Kadesh and camped at Mount Hor at the border of Edom. While they were at the foot of Mount Hor, Aaron the priest was directed by the Lord to go up the mountain, and there he died. This happened in midsummer on the first day of the fifth month of the fortieth year after Israel's departure from Egypt. Aaron was one hundred and twenty-three years old when he died there on Mount Hor. From Luke Then Jesus went to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and taught there in the synagogue every Sabbath day. There, too, the people were amazed at his teaching, for he spoke with authority. Once, when he was in the synagogue, a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit, began shouting at Jesus, Go away! Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One sent from God. Jesus cut him short. Be quiet! Come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the demon threw the man to the floor as the crowd watched. Then it came out of him without hurting him further. Amazed, the people exclaimed, What authority and power this man's words possess! Even evil spirits obey him, and they flee at his command. The news about Jesus spread through every village in the entire region. Jesus Heals Many People After leaving the synagogue that day, Jesus went to Simon's home where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. Standing at her bedside, he rebuked the fever, and it left her. And she got up at once and prepared a meal for them. As the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus. No matter what their diseases were, the touch of his hand healed everyone. 
Many were possessed by demons, and the demons came out at his command, shouting, You are the Son of God! But because they knew he was the Messiah, he rebuked them and refused to let them speak. Jesus continues to preach. Early the next morning, Jesus went out to an isolated place. The crowd searched everywhere for him, and when they finally found him, they begged him not to leave them. But he replied, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns too, because that is why I was sent. So he continued to travel around, preaching in synagogues throughout Judea. One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing, but if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you for he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Psalm 64 O God, listen to my complaint. Protect my life from my enemies' threats. Hide me from the plots of this evil mob, from this gang of wrongdoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim their bitter words like arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent, attacking suddenly and fearlessly. They encourage each other to do evil and plan how to set their traps in secret. Who will ever notice, they ask. As they plot their crimes, they say, We have devised the perfect plan. Yes, the human heart and mind are cunning. But God himself will shoot them with his arrows, suddenly striking them down. Their own tongues will ruin them, and all who see them will shake their heads in scorn. Then everyone will be afraid. They will proclaim the mighty acts of God and realize all the amazing things he does. The godly will rejoice in the Lord and find shelter in him, and those who do what is right will praise him. From Proverbs a beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like a gold ring in a pig's snout.